Okay. And I place the liquid plate into the sun. Okay. After five or six days, the sun would have evaporated water, mm -hmm. even it like this. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Right. Okay, yeah. I would then bake yeah. it here. Mm -hmm. And I go through this important process called wedging. Yeah. yeah. It's like you didn't do a food Yeah, it goes. <laughs> yeah, but then so, you have an afterwards. Yeah, it takes care of any air mm -hmm. and also evens the clear body to one consistency. Mm -hmm. I would normally give it over 50 of these wraps. Mm. Around 50. Yeah. Okay. Now we'll make it into this cone shape. Mm -hmm. It's now ready for the potter's wheel. Okay. Yeah. We'll be forming it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it better that way. Now here, mm -hmm. I'm going to be using the electrical wheel, okay. which I must say is a little bit more advanced mm -hmm. than what we were using many years ago. The very early potters would have had a wheel for lever. Mm -hmm. This one had a push, so it took two people. Okay. Then we had a kick wheel, which had a treadle. Mm -hmm. and then, because of our production level, you had to step up a little bit. Yeah. Now, as you can see here, this place is all centered kind of wobbly. Mm -hmm. So my first job then will be to center the clay. So here you go. Okay. Hmm. What you see me dip my hand to here is water. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this as a root key. Mm -hmm. It lubricates the clear and prevents my hand from dragging on it. Uh, if I was going to make a large pot, I would have used all the clay at one time. Or sometimes they can make two small pieces from this one lump. That's what we call throwing from the hump. Mm. Now I've got my clay centered. Now I can open up the bowl. Mm. I keep saying it's one of the more intriguing acts you'll come across. I've been making pots all these years, and there are very few things which thrills me more than to see another pot at work. Yeah. yeah. First time I saw it being done, I swear the guy was working magic. <laughs> it does look like magic. <laughs> yeah, amazing. It's magical. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. Now watch it here as your pot will begin to grow taller. So I've gone right to the bottom. I'm now stretching these walls taller. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I imagine if I did that, it wouldn't work the same oh, way. Oh no. <laughs> Eventually you'll get here. Because when <laughs> I first started, it didn't look like this also. Now watch it here as it grows taller. Okay. So do you give classes? Yeah, I'm also a part-time teacher. Okay. okay. And I've taught this from the primary straight to the tertiary level. Okay, yeah. that's very good. So they do it in schools here? Yeah. Oh. You can even do an associate degree at education at the community college, okay. of which pottery and ceramics is compulsory. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that I've got the height of the pot, I'm going to concentrate on the shape, mm -hmm. so that although partial service shape's ready, I'm now aiming at my final shape. It is now that I will determine what type of neck I'm giving to this waist. Mm. There was no well, plan. You right. you let the clay take its own shape. Well, it's more like you're in control. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's beautiful. You can see it coming now. Yeah. Now I've got an uneven rim here, and no one wants a pot from an even rim, so I need to correct that. Mm. It should come right here. Thank you. Wants to get a little bit of trouble, so I'll just stop the wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take care of it. Now I'm going to form a ridge here, and in all my vases and gels, you'll find this ridge, which I use as a trademark, mm -hmm. so it can be identified okay. mm. with that particular mark there. This is where I'll cut it off eventually. There's a little excess water here to the bottom, which I don't want there. Sometimes you leave that water there, it can create some problems when the pot is drained, mm -hmm. especially if it dries out too fast. So you always make sure that you take care of that water. I can now do the final touches on the neck here. Smoothing the edges. Now I stop the wheel. And now I'm going to use this bit of string, which I call a cutting wire. Cut mm -hmm. along the base here. Hmm. And now gently lift it off. Amazing. And there you've got your wrist. Fantastic. Yeah. The board isn't level there. 
Yeah. So I will leave that to dry for one. I'll make a second piece yeah. while I explain the other processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that dries for how long? I will leave it to dry for one day. Uh -huh. I then shave the bottom nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. It's another five to six days of drying before mm -hmm. it's taken to a very special oven they call a kiln. Okay. And I bake it there. At that first baking, I could have taken it to a high enough temperature where it could leave some of the pieces in their terracotta. That's the reddish look you see there. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, okay, yeah. the reddish look. Mm -hmm. Or I could have gone ahead and glazed it, which is a glass like coating. Mm -hmm. The glaze is actually made from a chemistry background. We've been working on some chemicals using non toxic materials. I then apply the glaze and I bake them a second time. This time to a very high temperature of 1200 degrees centigrade. So you're talking real heat. Mm -hmm. The heat would then cause those chemicals to react. So the fusion melt from that glass like surface. The color then appears at the same time. So that what you then actually have would be a clear pot for glass like coating. A case where the pot cannot leave the glaze, nor the glaze leave the pot. They all combine and fuse together. Mm -hmm. Then that would have been your final crop. Mm -hmm. This one I'm making here is a small bowl. Mm -hmm. You can have it like for your cereal, your nuts, or even on your dressing table where you can put your little like nuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, we're going to cut it off. And I was able to transform this bit of clay into two works of art. Yeah, amazing. Right. Yeah. Mm. But your second piece. That is definitely. beautiful. This Absolutely. is definitely too small, so just add it to another batch and start mm. again. Mm -hmm. Here I will select the department stores, give shops of towels. Now there are hundreds of people who will come to see mm -hmm. me from time to time. Yeah. So I'm also doing business directly from here. Okay. So if someone had to ask what was significant about the chalk note potteries, mm -hmm. one thing, we had contained a part of 250 years of culture. Mm -hmm. There was one point in time where most of the utensils used in our homes were produced right here in the village. We also use our local material, which mm -hmm. is from right here in the village. And you always get a chance to see the pot artwork. 